Okay, here we have an athlete on the football practice field, and he is getting set to run a 100-yard dash. He takes off and is soon up to full speed, but it's happening too fast right now to see each phase in action. But if we slow it down, we'll get a chance to stop the video at a point that will allow us to define each of the three basic phases of running. Okay, right here is a good place to stop. Let's take a closer look as to what is going on. The first thing we need to do is create a reference point, and the reference point here is the leg or foot that is in contact with the ground, and in this picture it is his right leg. Now with regards to his right leg, what we are most concerned with is the position of his thigh relative to the ground. The thigh is the region of the body between the hip and the knee. It's also where your quadriceps muscles are located in the front and the hamstring muscles in the back. In this image, we see his thigh is perpendicular to the ground, and so now this position of his leg on the ground with the thigh perpendicular to the ground is of special interest to us here. The thigh is now a more specific point of reference for us here as we begin to define each of the phases of running, and the reason the thigh is chosen and not the calf region or lower leg region is because when it comes to running, or even walking for that matter, the power to move your body forward is initiated at the hip joint first, and then movement at the knees and ankles follow immediately afterward. So as we begin to define each of the running phases, don't pay too much attention to the position of your calf or your lower leg region since the position and movements of this part of your body are secondary to the thigh and hip joint. The muscle groups responsible for initiating the entire movement of your leg forward and backward are the hip flexors and hip extensors. Sometimes, however, it's easier to refer to these muscle groups as thigh flexors and thigh extensors since it's easier to visualize the movement of the thigh taking place on the hip rather than trying to figure out how the hip joint is working. Now looking at the picture above with the thigh perpendicular to the ground, this position represents the beginning of the push phase and you will see why here in a second. If we advance the video a little further, you will notice that his right thigh is now starting to extend behind him and is no longer perpendicular to the ground. This represents the pushing motion taking place by his right leg and is where we get the name for the push phase. Now if we advance the video a little further still, you will see that the thigh continues to be extending behind him. The push phase ends when the toes of the right foot are barely touching the ground. As a general rule here, as long as the right foot is in contact with the ground and as long as the right thigh is extended behind him, he is in the push phase. Now this position, with his toes barely touching the ground, is another reference point. While it signals the end of the push phase, it now also signals the beginning of the swing phase. If we advance the video, you will notice that the right leg is off the ground and is being swung forward. This represents the swinging motion taking place by the right leg at the hip joint and is where we get the name for the swing phase. The swing phase continues for as long as the leg and foot are off the ground, and once the foot strikes the ground in front of you, this signals the end of the swing phase. As a general rule, as long as the leg is off the ground, it is in the swing phase. Now this position, with his right thigh flexed in front of him, and his right foot in contact with the ground, is yet another reference point. While it signals the end of the swing phase, it also signals the beginning of the pull phase. If we advance the video, you will notice that the right thigh is now starting to be pulled under him and this pulling motion is where we get the name for the pull phase. The pull phase ends when the thigh is perpendicular to the ground. And if you recall, this position also represented the beginning of the push phase. Now as a general rule, as long as the right foot is in contact with the ground and as long as the right thigh is flexed in front of you, you are in the pull phase.